Hello everyone, welcome to today's Idea Statica webinar. This webinar will be focused on the modeling and code checking of a continuous composite bridge. Let me introduce you to today's presenters. My name is Oshoya Kartali. I'm a product engineer at Idea Statica, and I have my colleague Petra Komarkova, also a product engineer, here with me. She will show you the example. Good morning. For the webinar, we are using GoToWebinar application. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to type the questions in into the GoToWebinar question panel, and we will uh, make sure to answer your questions either live during the webinar or after using emails. This is the agenda of today's webinar. We will show how to model a continuous composite bridge. For this, both Idea Statica and CI Engineer will be used. We will show how to set the construction stages properly according to this type of structure, how to design the pre-stressing, and we will talk a lot about loads and combinations, including temperature loads and moving load effects. As the last step, we will show the code check of the whole structure. So now I would like to pass the word to my colleague Petra, who will show you the example in the application. Thank you for the word, Arshi. <clears throat> so I'm going to screen my monitor and turn off the webcam. So hello everyone again. So before we get to practical example or we go to the softwares, uh, I would like to introduce uh, our bridge. So as it was said uh, in the beginning, uh, we are going to model and code check uh, composite, continuous composite bridge. Um, in this slide, you can see basic information which are relevant to static analysis. So information like uh, bridge span, uh, it's uh, symmetrical uh, continuous beam, 14 and 15 meters. Uh, we have also here bridge width and <clears throat> uh, it's important to say that this bridge is skew. You can see the skewness uh, here and in, in this slide there is a floor plan of this bridge. Also, there are some characteristics. <clears throat> and uh, so from the point of traffic, it is a road bridge. Uh, carriage way width is uh, 7.5 meters. Uh, from material point of view, it's composite um, structure of type concrete concrete. So we are going to combine a precast beam and cast in situ slab. And from static uh, point of view, uh, it is a girder bridge. Uh, in this slide, you can see the scheme of the transverse section and also the main thought of this uh, webinar or of the session. Um, we are going to use uh, two softwares. The first one is uh, CI Engineer. In this software, uh, there is a global model of this bridge and you can see uh, the whole structure and we are going to identify the critical member in the software and send this member into idea statica and uh, model it here uh, then uh, we will design the pre-stress and also uh, perform the code checks so right now i think it's time to switch to uh, CI engineer so here is the model I'm going to show you how it looks like. So we have um, several uh, girders and slab. You can see that if I select the slab, it's 2D member, and this slab is uh, strengthened by these girders. In uh, in this case, it is it is a uh, rip. So if I choose, for example, this one, it's a, you can see that it's a rip of this slab in these terms. Also, there are uh, diaphragms. 
so uh, they were modeled as transverse beams and the whole structure or the diaphragms and um, this, uh, the superstructure is connected by rigid links. Um, I just need to wait for the refresh of the software. <clears throat> Also, uh, the superstructure is supported by the bridge bearings. You can see three of them on each diaphragm. And the fixed support is uh, on the second support, support number two. In this uh, software, uh, we model this, uh, this structure. Okay, I will change the view. Okay. Okay. So we were able to uh, take into account the skewness, skewness of the bridge, and uh, we loaded the bridge by moving load and temperature load. Why these uh, two loads? Uh, this is because of um, the fact that in Idea Statica we cannot um, deal with this 3D problem or 3D structure and that's why we need some help from other software and in this case we used SIA Engineer. So I will show you a few load cases. So for example, this load case it is a tandem system. I'm going to show you the uh, the values or the load and the position, how you can get um, maximum or minimum internal force. So for example, if I want to, I'm going to switch by the bridge. Yeah, that's a better view. And for example, I know that uh, this uh, configuration of tandem system is for getting maximum uh, bending moment in the span. So this is about tandem systems. We were, and then we have a uniform load system. And also we have temperature, temperature load. So the temperature was applied on this uh, 2D member on the on the slab, and uh, as you can notice, we have uh, heat and cool, and um, we distinguish uniform and uh, non-uniform uh, temperature, and we are going to combine it later. So uh, once the model is um, adjusted and loaded, you can uh, run the calculation and after the calculation you get results. So let me show you the internal forces on beam. For example, uh, the case which I mentioned, um, tandem system, I'm going to uh, show it for the, I'm going to switch off the surfaces. And you can see uh, the bending moment uh, from this uh, from this load from this um, group of forces. So once we have the internal uh, forces, the results, uh, we can um, create so-called XML file and import these forces into Idea Statica. So um, the procedure is as follows. You go to Tools, then you uh, choose XML document. You will get another window, this output document. I'm going to start uh, from the beginning. So you click on these three dots, create a new document, and it's important to load the template because um, in order to get the results to Idea Statica, you need to use a, sp 
special template, which is uh, IDEA Import Designer 2013. You click open. Okay, and the document is arranged according to this uh, template. So we have the template and right now we can modify it. We don't have to import the whole structure. We can specify uh, the critical members. So if you if you remember, I said that we are going to um, model and code check this beam in Idea Statica. In CI Engineer, it is B6. So I'm going to um, load cases, internal forces on member, and in selection, I'm I will change the option all. This is default option, and uh, go for list. Click on three dots, and from this list, I'm going to choose uh, the critical member, which is B6 for me right now click OK. So it means that uh, I'm going to uh, work with results on B6 only. Other results uh, are not important right now for me. Then uh, I can go to load cases and also I can um, import all load cases or uh, again change or um, select the, the critical ones so for example if if i'm interested in these in these two these two and then maybe this one i will select them click ok and only these selected load cases will be exported so after uh, i'm done with the editing of this document i click on this button export choose the location where I want to um, save this file and click export. I'm not going to do this because it uh, takes some time and I don't want to bother you with this generating of this report and I've already created the report or the file. So let's go to Idea Statica Beam. So I have launched Idea Statica go to concrete tab and select beam this is application for calculating the beams and from you can you have here the geometry loads and um, then you can check the whole uh, construction the whole structure so first uh, uh, we need to create a new project and before creating the new project you will always uh, you will always get this wizard uh, it is uh, beneficial to use it because the whole process of um, modeling is uh, is uh, faster and uh, also a lot of load cases are generated automatically as you will see later. So uh, here you have to uh, specify what kind of structure it is. So I, I said that it's going to be combination of uh, prefabricated concrete beams and cast in situ, um, cast in situ slab. And also uh, we are going to combine uh, pre-stress uh, and or pre-tangent and post-tangent tendons. So uh let's go for the second option then uh it is a continuous beam uh, here we have a, a beam alignment and support position so it's a bridge so let's respect um, the dimensions of the of the structure uh, then you click next here we have the information or uh, if it's uh, 2D or 3D beam. So let's stay with straight beam loaded in vertical plane. According to this picture, you set the uh, left and right cantilever and of course the span of the, of the beam. So let's have a 0 0.3 meters uh, at both ends and the spans will be 14, 16, and 14 meters. Then you click next. 
uh, here uh, we can specify uh, design code. So let's stay with Eurocode and also National Annex. It's a bridge, so uh, let's check this uh, uh, checkbox. Then we have design working life, uh, 100 years. It's a road bridge, as I said uh, at the beginning. And right now we need to uh, define cross section. So uh, there are several uh, tab um, of type of cross sections. We are going to choose composite tab since it is composite beam. And uh, let's uh, take this T-shaped cross section. So the dimensions will be 280 millimeters. That's for this um, uh, web uh, of the of the beam or girder. You can see how it is changing here. Uh, then we will have 50 millimeters, 70. 1000 then this dimension will be zero because uh, we would like to have uh, straight flanges then uh, the width of the of the deck will be 1000 millimeters and uh, thickness of the of this part of the cast in situ slab will be 200 millimeters in this uh, part of the table, we need to specify um, the material of this part. So the component number one, which is precast beam, will be from concrete of higher strength, higher class, and um, the deck will be from C3037. Then we can click on OK. Uh, here, uh, we can specify or define the cross-section of the diaphragm. So it will be 1000 meter wide and the height will be a little bit higher, but uh, right now it is not uh, possible to change it, but we will change it after the wizard will be finished. Um, Self-weight will be calculated according to the, these cross-sections. Then uh, we can specify permanent load. So uh, this value of uh, 5.5 kilonewtons per meter include um, weight of the carriageway and um, also this part of the slab which is not uh, modeled because we modeled only one meter and the the girders are distance i think 1.3 meters also we could uh, include the weight of the ledges and and other things on the bridge but uh, mm, right now we will have just just uh, the carriage away and the self weight of the slab variable load uh, let's set on zero because we are going to import the forces uh, due to variable loads then we can click next and right now there uh, this is quite important step because we need to um, define global time axis so this, this structure will be um, created in, uh, in uh, some stages. So in this first table, we, as you can see in the picture, uh, we are um, defining the, the dimensions or the boundary conditions uh, during the construction stages. So as you can see, uh, this is the stage where there is only this uh, precast beam. So uh, we have some temporary supports and uh, we can define them here. So let's have uh, 0 0.5 meters uh, for these dimensions. The same is on the other side, on the right side. And this is age of precast 
prefabricated beam at the time of casting the, the diaphragms and the slabs. So they will be generated um, uh, gradually. And then in the lower part, global time axis uh, is here. Um, we have these uh, stages. We can uh change this uh time so for example yeah but we will leave it as it is then we click next and now um it's time for uh information about the history of the prefabricated beams so again you have some picture here and you can follow the the picture in order to get it according to uh, the project. So if uh, the history of prefabricated beams is the same, you can check this button. So it will uh, take these data into other tabs. So in this column, we say that uh, on a fifth day, uh, we are going to apply the pre-stress, then there will be a state story chart. We we don't want to or don't want to specify or calculate a transport stage. Then we have temporary supports. Here uh, you can control the length of the cantilever. So uh, let's say that uh, the span is 10 meters for this beam, for the second beam it's 12 because there is higher span. If I go back to beam one, uh, you can also uh, say um, whether it is pre-stressed or uh, uh, whether it is pre-stressed or pre-tension or post-tension. So uh, they are prefabricated beams, so uh, we check this um, this button. So we can click on finish button and in uh, in few seconds uh, we get this a structural scheme so it's a continuous beam of uh, three spans um, if I go to cross sections here is the cross section of the beam the second cross section is for diaphragm so now we can change for example the, the dimensions the dimension here there are the materials which were defined and th then if we go to geometry we can also uh, change the geometry it's up to us and then in supports uh, the default um, configuration is that the fixed or uh, yeah fixed uh, bearing is on the left if we want to change it, we can, for example, to have it on the support number two, we can simply add the fixed support here. And if I uncheck this box, I would get um, these uh, sliding support. So right now the scheme is identical to the scheme which was modeled in SIA Engineer. So once the geometry is um, is done, we can proceed to loads. So load cases, that's the first first step. So you can see that there are several several load cases, self weight, uh, pre stress, uh, then also. This is a superimposed dead load, a minus 5.5. If you remember, we input this in the wizard. So uh, these load cases were generated automatically based on the wizard, uh, which were um, which we uh, were showing. 
Then we have permanent load groups and variable gro load groups. Uh, we will modify uh, these uh, variable load groups um, in, a, in a minute and I will uh, explain you why. Right now, um, let's uh, design the pre-stress, the tendons. So for these purposes, we have this button, tendon design. Adiastatica tendon will open and we define the layout of the pretangent and post-tangent tendons. So as first you can see time axis and um, the scheme of this um, of this um, construction uh, stages. So you can see that it's quite complicated um, structure. For the design of the tendons, you go to tendons, click on tendon layout. Right now we have no tendons here, so let's define some then. So as first, we have um, here is the construction stage, pre-2, then we have pre-5 and pre-8 and post-12. So let's start with pre-2 and input the tendons uh, into this beam. Mm, so it's a pre-tangent tendons and what they will be pretensions. So let's click on this pretensions on edge. We get this uh, group of the tendons. Here we can specify the material. If you wish to change it, you click on these green arrows and and uh, select the right uh, material for pre-stressing steel. Here we can specify the initial stress. So let's have uh, 1450. And then we will uh, modify the geometry. So let's go to pretension group. I'm going to uh, modify this window a bit. And uh, here we have our section and we can see the position of the tendons. So uh, we would like to have two tendons. Uh, uh, then um, let's, uh, if I check this, uh, draw dimension lines. Uh, I can uh, check the dimension or the, of the or the distance from the distance of the tendon from from this edge. So, for example, I would like to have them a little bit higher. So let's have 40 millimeters, and from the from the sides, let's have uh, 55 millimeters. Then um, I would like to create another another group of tendons. So let's click on pretension on edge again, or we can also um, if I click on it, we can also copy them. But right now we are going to click on this. A button again, uh, I go to pretension group and change uh, the distances. Uh, this time it's going to be 50 millimeters from this edge and 40 and 40 millimeters from, from the sides. Uh, if I, I would like to see both of the groups, so right now I can see them in x, y and x, z plane. Um, if you, you can also switch to 3D view or to cross-section uh, view and you need to change the position or you need to uh, move to the position where the tendons are defined. So for example, if I click on two meters, uh, I can see that uh, there are the tendons and I can see the position of them. Okay. 
So this is uh, all for the uh, this stage for pre two. Uh, to speed up the whole process of modeling, I'm going to export these two uh, groups of tendons. So uh, click on export all tendons and create mm, create uh, this file. And in in a minute you you will understand why I did this. So let's switch to pre five uh, to uncoiled uh, view. So right now we are defining the tendons on in this beam, and we are going to import the tendons and use use the file which was created a minute ago. So by this, we got the tendons like in a second, and then we will do the same for the third beam. So another import and we have the tendons. So we have a several group of tendons for each uh, beam, for each spam, span. And um, as last, we are going to switch to post, which is the th stage where the beams were connected to each other by the slab and the diaphragms, and we have different static scheme. And we are going to define parabolic uh, layout of the tendon. So for this, we go to segment, uh, choose take supports into account. We get this or we got this um, geometry of the tendon. Again, as a first, we can modify the material, of course, define the number of strands. So, for example, let's have five strands and that diameter will be 60 millimeters. There are other parameters for calculation of the losses. So let's have metal uh, duct stress or stressing uh, will be from both ends and first anchoring will be at the beginning. So it means it's going to be here. And um, we can also take into account correction of relaxation. So this is about the pre-stressing um, steel or uh, tendon characteristics and right now we have to or we need to modify the, the geometry so we we work in two planes x y and x z so in x y it's it is a it is a floor plan and it is a straight tendon so we don't need to don't need to uh, modify it but in tendon uh, geometry x z this is this one uh, we are going to uh, modify this this point and get it a bit lower because uh, it will be only um, the tendons will be only in the precast beams. So um, let's uh, go to row two and change the minimum z to minus 300 so you can see that now it is um, lower and we will do the same for the point number five so, so let's switch to five and here we input minus 300 so Right now, I'm happy with the with the tendon layout. Uh, we can also switch to 3D view and check out check out the the tendons. So you can see pre tension tendons and the post tension tendon. Also, if I click to cross section and change this position for, I don't know, 14 millimeters. Oh, that's diaphragm, so 
16 so you can see how it is changing and these tendons are at the same location because they are straight so uh, this was the procedure how we can design the pre-stress now right now i'm going to exit this module and i can show you that in load cases i already got some uh, equivalent load due to pre-stress if i go to the particular stage and if i go to post 12 here you can see quite complicated equivalent of this parabolic tendon so uh, only the variable loads uh, are missing so let's go to user defined forces and get back to xml document the xml document from sia engineer so uh, we have we are in user defined forces click on import from xml and we need to uh, we need to find the location where uh, is this uh, file so i have it here click op open you will get this uh, window um, and you can read that list of members is b6 so this is our critical member and then in this document the um, the software found that there are several combinations and load cases. Right now we are importing only load cases it, or let's say it's possible to import load cases because the combinations are created here in Idea Statica. Um, in this second part or right part of this table you can also um, uh, control the range of the of the internal forces or right now it means that we are going to import the forces from uh, member number one to 11 so it's from the beginning to the end but you can also um, import the forces only on the part of the beam if you need it and uh, also uh, you can shift the uh, the diagrams of the internal forces let's say that you you could have some case where it is shifted somehow so you can control it here and uh, at the end you can also specify what type of what or what components of internal forces you need to import so let's have all forces i click ok it will take some time after the import you should get uh, the message uh, that the import was um, uh or more performed uh without any problems and uh you will also get the number of created load cases so uh, we imported 13 load cases i'm going to click on ok button and you can see uh the for for example right now we have here bending moment so this is diagram of bending moment due to load case LC18 uh, which is um, which is this load case I'm going to show you the position of the of the load and you should get the same values which are here in C engineer into idea statica so these load cases are not calculated here in idea statica they are imported from different software from ci engineer now let's go back to load cases we can check that uh, these 18 or i don't know how many of them were uh, were imported and they are listed here the name of the load case is the same uh, as in ci engineer and you can see that the software recognized that it's a variable type of load but um, we need to modify or change the load group uh, for the particular load cases 
So let's go to variable load groups and um, modify the groups. So the first group will be for tandem system 300. Then we are going to delete these load groups. We don't need them. I'm going to create another uh, tandem system load group for 200 kilonewtons per exile. And then we have temperature load. So let's define temperature uh, load group. You can notice that the um, factors uh, are changing according to this um, according to this um, settings. You can also modify them, but right now it is according to uh, the euro code. Then we go to load cases and um, assign the right load group to uh, the load case. So the first load cases are for uh, tandem system 300 kilonewton. Then we have uh, 200. Then we have a uniform, um, distri uniformly distributed load. So let's have or let's keep this the, this load group. And then these last four load cases um, are temperature loads. So right now. Uh, it is um, correct and we can proceed and um, create the combinations. So let's click on combination. The combinations will be generated according to the code. Uh, the uh, ULS for the combinations for the ULS will be according to uh, equation 6, 10, A and B and then characteristic quasi-permanent and frequent combination will be according to uh, the code uh, as well, but uh, there is only one prescription as you probably know. Uh, so if you click on edit, you can edit the content of the combinations. So here you can see the combinations for particular stages. So we won't uh, modify them because everything uh, has been set by means of wizard. We have um, dead load, pre-stress, uh, these R uh, stages means um, rheology, so uh, we are um, or creep and shrinkage of the concrete is included in the in this analysis. And if we uh, move down to the last uh, uh, construction stage, end of design working life, we can add the variable load here. Um, and how we will do this? Uh, so it's very easy. We will just click on this button because here you have list of all load cases included in, uh, in this project. But here is the list of the load cases, which is in the combination. So if I click on this uh, button, I get these load cases uh, into the combination. I don't need to set any coefficients or factors because they are already set in, in the load groups. That's, that's why we, um, we needed to, or we, had to make sure that uh, these load cases are in the correct load group. And we will do this for uh, all combinations. So I'm going to repeat this, this action very quickly and click OK. So I have the uh, combinations. That's all I uh, had to do. 
before we go to calculate or do to the analysis, let's check out the construction uh, stages. So uh, first we have uh, settings. We can also set some uh, parameters here. Uh, second, we have member history because um, we have several members here. So, but I would like to show you the construction stages and you can um, see uh, how the how this bridge is generated. So first we have this uh, precast beams on some uh, in some factory. Then you have uh, have it uh, on the storage yard. You have some temporary supports, and they are uh, they are created uh, one by one. And maybe the uh, most interesting uh, stage is this stage number 11, casting of composite slab. You can see that uh, it was uh, connected by means of uh, the slab and the diaphragms. Then we have different static scheme, continuous beam, and we can apply another load. And uh, here is the last stage of the of the bridge we can also add new stage for example service stage uh, let's say that the bridge will be uh, in in service um, 150 days on the global time axis um, and we can also check this stage um, let's go back to combination and since we we have another stage, this uh, is service stage. Let's, um, oh yeah, the, it was all automatically added the variable load. So let's just check it if, yeah, they are each load case or variable load case was added automatically. So let's click OK. And um, we can calculate the the structure or, or run the analysis. So it will take uh, some time. Uh, you can see that uh, TD, TDA is running. It means that uh, each stage is uh, calculated and all the uh, all the things we uh, defined are uh, taken into account. So it means that uh, the generation of another member, um, aging of the of the members, pre-stressing and adding another or applying another loads. So uh, maybe I will um, jump to uh, already calculated project because um, we are running out of time. So. I'm going to switch to going to switch to um, already calculated project. So uh, after the calculation, uh, you will get results in forms of reaction, deformations, and internal forces. Okay, and right now I'm having some trouble, so maybe it's better to wait for for the results here. Yeah, okay. So we have results. Uh, let's check out the internal forces. Um, so um, let's let's. Uh, Select, uh, for example, um, temporary support stage. And uh, right now we have uh, ULS envelope of bending moments for, uh, for these members. If I want to see a normal force, I can switch to normal force and you can see the diagrams or shear forces bending moments uh, in the data window 
you can see the maximum and minimum internal forces and also the uh, particular combination. If I uh, move it a bit, here under the uh, combinations, you have the combination rules um, and you can, I don't know, check uh, um, the, the internal forces or the you can check the combination rule for the internal forces. If I uh, switch to, for example, service stage, so it, this is the stage where the uh, structure uh, acts like a continuous beam. And again, I'm, um, I choose the envelope. So this is the envelope of bending moments. Uh, and we have here uh, basically all load cases, uh, dead loads, pre-stress, and also variable loads. If I want to see characteristic values, I go to, or I go for characteristic envelope. So this is about uh, checking out the results and these results uh, go to concrete design. So let's click on data. So in this um, part we can uh, specify what checks uh, should be done. So for example we are in the plane so we can uncheck the torsion, we can also don't have to check bridge of failure or detailing, lateral stability. The more checks are checked, the uh, longer it, the calculation is. Also here important uh, parameters for calculating of the, of the cracks. In the second part, reinforcement, we specify the reinforcement of the of the sections. Uh, the, here uh, we have only or we have this kind of uh, zones. We can also change the zone and have uh, different types of reinforcement uh, in the surroundings of the support, different reinforcement for the span. But for this purposes let's have only one uh, reinforcement type. Uh, so click on this section and we will um, define reinforcement. I've already created a um, template. So uh, this uh, this is the reinforcement for our beam composite with the slab. Let's click OK. We can also uh, specify the reinforcement for the diaphragm. But right now um, let's um, Let's check only the span and maybe uh, some section here about uh, uh, near to the support. So uh, here in the check position table you can add or delete uh, the section or you can rename it. So for example the first section which I want to check is here. So it's uh, from it's member six or from point six, it's going to be 7.5 meters. I can uh, see that here uh, is the section and let's rename it to a span for example and the, the second section will be support and let's define it need to the support so for example 0 0.3 meters from from the six point here you can also uh, run or control if it's check if it goes to for check or not and after the these settings we can move to results. So if you click on results, uh, 
these checks will be performed for the defined sections. And uh, yeah, right now maybe we can go to already uh, calculated project. So this is the same project after the checks. So um, you can see the summary of checks and uh, the status of the checks are here in the in these details. Um, for for detailed um, results, it's better to go to uh, detailed this this button. By clicking on this button, we will get to RCS environment. We need to load the results. So you can see that several combinations were automatically generated. And uh, on the sections, we can see um, the status of the checks for the particular uh, stages. So for example, we can see that we have some troubles at the end of design working life. If I click on it, I can see in this um, right window, the internal forces and also the status of the checks. So probably I need to change something because uh, uh, capacity or uh, check for the bending uh, uh, is not satisfied. This is for the section around the support. If I click on uh, span this second section which we created. Uh, here it is a little bit better and can see that here is some kind of problem but it's only about uh, stress limitation and and crack width. So if you need to uh, see the, the results, uh, go to results. Uh, so we have span section and this uh, end of working life stage. Here is oh, again some kind of summary and uh, by clicking on particular uh, tabs you can go through the through the results for example stress limitation. I would like to mention that uh, the sections were checked in particular stages. So for example here we have the stage where only precast beam um, is acting. I'd, then we have then we have another stage where the slab was uh, created and you can see that we, we got some strain and stresses uh, on the on this part of the slab. So um, I'm going to close these detailed results. The last step would be creating of the report, but um, obviously we should um, optimize our design and um, change some reinforcement or tendon layouts. So I guess uh, it's all from my side. Uh, so thank you for the attention and right now I'm going to give a word to Orshi. Thank you Petra for the nice presentation and now it is the time for some questions. Uh, we got an interesting question from a viewer about uh, which applications are we connected to uh, like CI engineer so I will show you uh, our resource center on our main website ideastatica.com. If you go to resources, we have tutorials for all our applications. And here is our tutorials for Beam. And in the Beam tutorials, you find a list of all the applications that we are connected with. Here is CI Engineer, Robot, RFM, Axis VM, Advanced Design. For example, I will show the connection with Axis VM. And this is a step by step tutorial how to make the beam link working so you can get uh, the internal forces and or 
some part of the structure into our application. So just following it step by step, you will install the BIM link and get the structure into Idea Statica. So uh, the other questions will be answered via email because we are running out of time. After the webinar, please fill our short survey. The recording will be available in uh, the webinar section on our website and on our YouTube channel also. If you are interested in trying Idea Statica, you can get a trial version on our website and please check out our resource center because we have a lot of materials for you, not only tutorials, but also sample projects and so on. Here are some of the recent webinars, if you missed any of it. For example, yesterday we had a webinar with Hilti. It was about the new process engineering because this application has our innovative CBFAM method implemented inside too. And uh, the most recent concrete webinar was the webinar for the structural optimization of a precast beam in Idea Statica Detail. You can find its recording already on our YouTube channel. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for attending today's webinar and have a good day. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.